Hello and welcome. My name is Torbjörn Nordling and I'm an assistant professor in automatic control at the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the National Shengong University and also the general chair of this workshop. The house behind me was designed and built in collaboration with Purdue University in 1957. It was financed by US aid and built as the new library of the National Shengong University. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our honorary chair, executive vice president and chair professor Wu. It is a pleasure to welcome all of you on behalf of the National Chengkang University in Taiwan. I am proud that our team, the NCKU Parkinson's Disease Quantifiers, are one of the finalists in the OpenCV AI competition. They are also arranging this workshop. Now let us all learn computer vision and AI using the OP camera together. It's my honor to introduce Assistant Professor Kuo Shi Tseng from the Department of Mathematics at the National Central University in Taiwan. He obtained his Master of Science degree from the National Taiwan University in 2004 and his second Master of Science degree and PhD from the University of Minnesota in 2013 and 2016, respectively. Professor Tseng will be presenting his work on transfer learning of coverage functions. In this simulation, you can see a robot that is searching after a person. And in order to find the person, the robot must learn the environment, in other words, a coverage function. And this makes learning of coverage functions relevant for spatial AI applications. Please help me welcome Professor Tseng. This video presents the research entitled Transfer Learning of Coverage Functions by invariant properties in the Fourier domain, the OSA is Kushizen, in the robotic search lab in the Department of Mathematics at the National Central University, Taiwan. I will introduce the background knowledge and the purpose of this research, theory and the corollary, algorithms, experiments, and the conclusions. Okay, so the background knowledge is as follows. So for example, if we have a four, four sets and uh, the set function, the coverage function will have uh, two to the four possible values. In this case, uh, the n is four. So we will have uh, 16 kinds of values. Okay, so if we take a Fourier transform for this function, then uh, use the Hartmann transform, then we will get the uh, Fourier coefficient. Okay, so let's look at the uh, details. For example, uh, here, uh, the zero order means you select no sets. So this is zero, 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 then you get the value in the spatial domain is zero. Okay, so the first order means uh, you select one set. So this, uh, this rule means you select the number four set. This rule means you select the number one set. Okay, so, and so on. So you can uh, find the second order, third order, and the fourth order. Okay, so the interesting thing is um, if you transfer a coverage function into the fluid domain, you will find the sparsity. So now let's explore the sparsity. Okay. So you will find uh, in in this case uh, there are several zero values, but why? So we try to explore this problem. Okay, so we can find uh, every uh, every set includes the number four. Then 
it will have a low zero value in the free domain because uh, uh, this set has no sensing overlap with the other set. Okay, so uh, this, this was the, our previous work. And this approach is called a spatial Fourier sparse set. So now we want in this in this research we try to prove why this is sparse. Okay, so the goal of this research is to explore the invariant properties of coverage functions and then apply them to transfer learning. In the transfer learning problem, we will try to answer one question. Okay, so could the robot utilize the learned information in different maps? For example, if the robot uh, built the coverage function in the map A, so when it moved to another map, so could the robot utilize the same information? Okay, so this is the concept of transfer learning. Okay, so three problems are answered and uh, investigate in this paper. So the first question is, what is the sparsity condition in the Fourier domain? Okay, so we found uh, if there is no sensing overlapping in the spatial domain, when you transfer it into the Fourier domain, it will be sparse. In this case, you will find uh, uh, the number one and number four they don't have the intersections, so its value in the Fourier domain should be zero. Okay, so the second question is, what's the maximum number of Fourier support for the coverage function? So we found um, the maximum number is 2 to the n, and the minimum number is n. Okay, so the final question is, what is the maximum number of the Fourier support? At the different environments. Okay, so we will find uh, the main sum number will happen in uh, in the case when there is no obstacle in the environment. In this case, we will have the mass map Fourier support, and this concept can be applied to transfer learning to prove the invariant properties of coverage functions. The theory and the corollaries. As follows, theory one mentioned about union intersection transform of coverage function. For example, a coverage function in a spatial domain, so it should be the coverage of set union. But when we transfer into Fourier domain, you will find that it's a linear combination of the set intersection. Okay, so we can show you an example here. So for example, there are four sets and uh, their frequency f1234 means if you select the uh, four sets this is its a uh, coefficient of the frequency and so on so we will find uh, the when you transfer the uh, the coverage function into the Fourier domain it will become the set intersection values okay then uh, it's interesting because um, this is useful for the sparsity. Okay, so in the in the colloquy too, then we can utilize this equation then to find the sparsity. For example, if the if the uh, third set and the fourth set they don't have the intersections, okay. So their intersection values is zero. So uh, in this case, uh, your, your frequency value will become zero because this is zero and the it's a superset. The, uh, the intersection of its supersets are also zero. So finally we can find this is uh, zero. Okay, then we can also get the same conclusion from the other, uh, the other two frequency coefficients because uh, they are the superset of uh, set 3 and 4. Okay, so this is the reason why we have a sparsity when there is no uh, sensing overlapping. 
Okay, then the calculus three also show that uh, based on these equations, we can find um, if the frequency is higher, its coefficient is lower due to the uh, decay terms. We also can show this in a spectrum picture. Here is an example when n is equal to 48. Then uh, the spectrum we can find uh, when when the frequency is higher, then uh, the coefficient of the frequency is lower. Another interesting thing we try to figure out is that what is the maximum and the minimum number of Fourier support. In this case, uh, each set overlays each other. So in this case, we we will have the two to the four Fourier support. So its completion rate is two to the four divided by two to the four, so equals one which means we cannot compress any uh, number by the Fourier transform in this case. Okay, so the other case is there is no sensing overlap between each set. In this case, um, the Fourier support should be the zero order and the first order. So the number is four. And uh, this, the compression rate is two to the four divided by five. So the compression rate is 3.2. In this case, we can compute the maximum and the minimum Fourier support number. Okay, another interesting thing is, so what is the maximum number of Fourier support at a different environments? Then here is an example. So in this example, there is no obstacles. So its Fourier support in this case should be six because there is a sensing overlap between number two and the number three. And then in another case, let's assume we have an obstacle in front of the number three. So in this case, uh, there is no sensing overlap between the number two and the number, th number three. So in, in this case, uh, the Fourier coefficient in this, in this case, it should be zero. Okay, so the Fourier support number is five. So we can infer that the maximum Fourier support number happened in the empty map. Okay, so this concept can be used for transfer learning. To conclude the theorem and the calculate, the theorem one and the calculate to show that if there is a coverage function, it will be sparse when there is no sensing overlapping between sets. Calculating three show that uh, the lower order terms have a higher weighting. For example, if you will try to drop some coefficients, we should consider to drop the high frequency, higher order terms first. Theory six show that uh, the Fourier support can be computed without any map information. This property can be used for transfer learning because we can use the empty map without any map information. Then we can construct the Fourier spectrum. The algorithms are as follows. In the initial stage, we have to generate the Fourier support. Here is the equation to generate it. So we have to generate the first order, second order, third order, and so on for the Fourier basis. Here is an example. For example, we have generated the second order. Then uh, we have to compute uh, all of the second order terms. If uh, those terms are more than the beta, then we will save it as the second order basis. Here is an example. And then we have to save uh, the, the second order terms, then expand it to the third order terms as the uh, example shows. So here, there are three sets, then we are computing the intersection between three sets. If the intersection area is more than beta, then we will save this as the third order basis. Then we keep doing that until we find all of the basis. Once we have the basis, we can collect some uh, coverage data and its corresponding set. And based on the corresponding set, we can compute the sign matrix. 
Once we have sign matrix, we can use sparse regression to compute the uh, Fourier coefficient. Once we have the Fourier coefficient, then we can give any set. Then we can use the set to compute the new sign, then find the coverage data. This algorithm is called SFSS algorithm. For the such case, we can apply this concept to search the target. For example, uh, the robot is trying to move to the sub goal. Before uh, it moves to the sub goal, it can collect the data, uh, like the coverage data and its corresponding set. And once it collects enough of data, then we can use it to compute the coverage. For example, when the robot arrives to the sub goal, then uh, we can use FSS equation to compute its uh, Fourier coefficient. So this equation is similar to equation two. The only difference is so we consider the motion constraint. So it's similar to the equation two. For example, uh, the robot can compute its sign matrix, and the robot can collect its corresponding coverage, and then we can find the Fourier coefficient. Then once uh, the robot try to uh, find the, the next sub goal, then it can compute the, what is the maximum coverage rate, then select it as the next sub goal. The experimental setting is as follows. To evaluate the proposed algorithm, there are four environments, including an empty map, map one. Map two is like this environment, and uh, this is its corresponding query map two. Then we can see uh, the same in the map three and the map four. We design three experiments to verify the performance. For the experiment one, the reconstruction experiments, we have a FSS and a SFSS with different base number. Then uh, the environment is a uh, empty map, map 2 and map 3, then we can com uh, compute its uh, reconstruction accuracy to compare the performance. For the second experiment, it's a transfer learning experiment. Uh, for the transfer learning algorithm, the initial Fourier coefficient is based on a uh, learned from an empty map. For the Fourier uh, SFSS approach, uh, the initial Fourier, Fourier coefficient is just a zero vector. Then we compare their performance in two different maps. For the third experiment, it's a search experiment. So we have the same setting in the experiment two, but the difference is the environment is a map for and we use a robot for search. A robot will try to search for uh, targets uh, within 30 times. Then based on the search time, we can compare which one's performance is better. For the experiment one, uh, here is the result. We can find the SFSS equation has better performance than FSS since uh, we find a better Fourier support. And uh, here is the uh, Full Fourier support, then this is another Fourier support, part of Fourier support. Then we can find that in this case, we can recover the coverage function accuracy. Okay, for the second experiment, we will find uh, the transfer learning algorithms will have a uh, better accuracy than the SFS algorithm. This experiment shows that uh, given the initial Fourier coefficient, then uh, the equation can learn it more accurately. For the third experiment, here is the SFS transfer learning equation in the 27th uh, trial. Then we will find that the robot will try to find the target around here, <coughs> then move toward to the this area, then try to uh, turn around and then move, move forward. 
then uh, the robot start to detect the target, uh, the, the base cable, and finish this episode. And this is FSS without uh, an initial full coefficient, so it will take more time to learn the environment. Then we can find uh, the loop uh, not, does not just move forward, it moves to the left hand side, then move to move to the upside, then move around, try to cover the environment. and uh, keep moving forward. Finally detect the target. Okay, so in this experiment we can find uh, if we have a better initial free coefficients, uh, the SFS equation can learn the coverage function better. In conclusion, the major contributions of this research are as follows. First, we found the invariant properties of coverage functions. For example, if we transfer a coverage function into a free domain, it will be surpassed if uh, the, there is no sensing overlap between two sets. Second, according to the theory, uh, we propose an uh, algorithm can find the fully support by the branch and the bound algorithm. You can set different beta values to find uh, the different number of Fourier support. Third, the theory and the experiments demonstrate that the proposed algorithm can exactly or approximately reconstruct coverage functions by setting different beta values. Finally, the experiments also show that the proposed transfer learning algorithm outperforms the benchmark model like FSS and the SFSS. If you have more questions, you are welcome to send an email to me.